Hi everyone, it's Diane with Class Acts Inspirational Thursday. I'm just going to wait a few minutes to see who pops online and getting everything set up on my iP oh, iPad. Perfect, it's going, it's in the right, let me just shove this over a little more. Now, there's a glare right here on my, on my, uh, and I don't I have no idea what it is on my glass mat I have no idea must be a glare from something but I can't figure out what it is hey hon Tom always watches when I'm doing these hey Shirley how are you I'm just going to grab a sip of my tea here before we get started. So today, we're doing embossing folders and some different techniques with them. Now, I've been online looking up some techniques, so I can't take full responsibility for these. The first one we're going to do, it's a, it's a swirl um, embossing folder that I've got from Carol that I've had for years. Now, see, this is the embossed side. This is the debossed side. And I'm going to show you how you get that effect. So you take a piece of blue cardstock, which I already have cut. And my folders are here. So I just want to get everything ready here. So here is my swirl. Oh, excuse me. Um, embossing folder. So what you want to do is you want to open it up and you want to find the side with the bump, not the groove, the one with the bump, with the embossed part. And you're going to put some Versamark on it, just like so. Be careful not to press too heavily because you don't, you just want it on the embossed part. You don't want it on the whole folder. Hi, Carol. How are you? Like so. And I did put it all over for a small piece of paper, but that's okay. And I'm going to put that in like so. And I'm going to go over to my embossing machine. Or my, sorry, my Vegabond. And put that through the embossing. Okay, let's see. If, I think that might be. We'll hear it going in the background. Okay. Now you won't be able to see the Versa mark on. Oh, you can a little bit. So you have the debossed here, and you have the embossed right here. So what we're going to do is I have my coffee filter. And we're just going to cover it all with the embossing powder like so and you got to get it really covered in there like so so now I'm going to put my embossing powder back like so of course I get it on my table so what you're going to do is because you have embossing powder all around I'm going to show you. You just scrape it like this. And it'll take it off because you want it in the grooves. Like so. And then you have it all over your table like I do. In the garbage. Hun, can you do me a favor? I know you can hear me. Can you just uh, phone Sarah and tell her I'm doing my inspirational Thursday and I'll call her back, please? <laughs> the great thing about having him watch. Oops. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're just going to do your heat gun. Like so. 
forgot to let her know I was doing Inspirational Thursday tonight. Yes, exactly. Hey, Joanne. You know it, Carol. You know it. Hey, Margaret. And look at that. Now I just choose cho excuse me chose the blue and the uh, red because you could actually it's a big um, difference in the two colors so you could see it. But isn't that nice, Christmassy? So there's the first demonstration I wanted to show you. Now the second demonstration done a couple of things here, and excuse me, I have to find this one here. I have everything beside me in a little a container. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you this. Now, if you can see the wood pattern in here. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that as a background as well. So you take your white piece of paper. And of course, I, don't, I have some, but I don't know where it's all cut. And you cut it at four and five and a half. Or four and five and a quarter, I believe it is. Yes five and a quarter okay now the of course I've got to find my scoreboard and of course it is not where I put it if you ladies just give me a quick second I know it's here somewhere with everything else piled yeah I found it over here where it's supposed to be okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of white card, white cardstock and you're going to score it, excuse me, at every half inch. And I like to go backwards as it's easier. So you're going to do it at three and a half, three, two and a half, two. Hey, Linda, how are you? One and a half, one and one half. Okay, that's what I did to score it. Now, I I'm using three different types of the distressed ink. I'm using the tea dyed, the vintage photo, and the walnut stain to get this effect. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your tea dye. And you're just going to, like this, to make it the wood effect. Like, like almost like paneling like we had in our basements when we were kids. Okay, just do that there a bit. There we go. Then I'm going to wipe off my table because it's, or my uh, glass mat, my media mat, because it is full of the brown ink. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this all to new curving leaves embossing folder. And we'll go like so, and we're going to just emboss that over at the embossing machine here. Yes, we have to go for lunch, Linda. So see how it is? You've got like your wood panel effect here. So then I'm going to take the next color in the brown family, the vintage photo. And I'm going to go over this again, like so. Okay, lightly. And then I'm going to take the walnut stain just to give it that extra darkness. Put that aside. Now look at that. Simple. Yet elegant. 
it looks like the vine is actually in the paneling. Okay, now I'm going to do a different technique. And those techniques were pretty fast. So this one, we'll be using our oxide inks. And let me see if I have the right um, embossing folder. If you want to take a look here. And it's on black. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that as well. So I have my black paper here. And I'm just going to cut it a bit bigger to fit the whole embossing folder on it. So I will cut it down after I make the card, but I want to show you the whole effect of it. Okay. So I'm using the black 110 pound cardstock for this one. Okay, and this is the Altenew Decorative Florals. Okay, and I'm going to put that through the machine. Well, this technique is a bit different because you're actually doing the card front. Okay, so there it is embossed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some white pigment in ink and I'm using the B Brilliance from Memento. And I'm going to go lightly. Actually, over the top of it, that works out better, a little better. Because you just... You want to give it that bit of color on the embossed part. Okay. I found the little one, the little ink pad worked a lot better than the bigger one. You have more control over it. Now, you can leave this white if you'd like, but we're going to color it today. So there it is with white. And now you can leave it like that, black and white cards. Absolutely perfect, but we're going to color them today. So I have my, ooh. And we're going to use what I liked together was the cracked pistachio and the abandoned coral. Yeah, excellent sympathy card. And I'm using these little blenders because I found them in my stash. And I'm just going to color Thanks, Sandra. I really like this. I'm trying to find more uses for my um, my oxides. I have quite a few. I'm, I don't have all of them. One day I'd like all of them. Hint, hint, dear. Yeah, I like the look of black and white as well. I like navy and silver is my absolute favorite. I mean, you could do this in a navy and silver, actually. That would look really nice if you had a silver ink. Now, I like the oxides on this, and I'll show you why. I did, I did another card similar to this with just the distress inks. And it, you can't, you can hardly see the distress inks on them. And then you go, you can go darker if you want darker. Lighter if you want lighter. Just get these little buds in here. And the fun thing is, is if you go out of the lines with this, an eraser takes it off. And I'll just, I'll show you when I finish this one. Okay, say I went here like so. Okay, you can see in the corner I've made a mistake. And watch me not have my eraser here. Oh, there it is. Now watch this. takes it right away so the next th color I'm going to use is the cracked pistachio for the leaves and it really turns out nice too and 
and see. I didn't know that trick either. And I went out of the lines and I thought, oh, what am I going to use? And I tried the eraser. And that's the Prisma eraser that I got with the, my Prisma um, pencil crayons. I'm going to try this on a, on a navy when I'm done this with the silver and just to see how it, see now see how I've gone out of the lines just to see how it works. I think I have silver ink somewhere. Okay, now I got to get my eraser in here and get rid of all that. It will not remove the white pigment ink, but it does remove the extra um, distress oxides. And look at that. Now I do have some in here I don't like. Get rid of that in there. What do you think, ladies? Now I'm going to show you this one beside the one that I did in the... Um, in the regular inks. Oh, and I have one in another color that I did. And you won't, you'll see the difference. Here's another one that I've done. Just in a, a lighter colors. And there's that one in the darker. I think they'll make great cards. Okay. And then I just added some glitter on mine through here. Now, I'm going to show you. This is the oxides. Now, see how dark that is? And that is with the uh, Distress inks. So, it does go a bit darker. I mean, the, the screen is making it go a bit lighter. And I really, really, really like this effect. And there's that one. Now, I did another... In, um, folder I just wanted to show you and I'm and there's that one I think I'm going to print that do that one again and I've got the black paper here and I'm going to I'm going to choose some different colors in the oxides and see how uh how they look that one is with yellow and the yellow just didn't um pop as much as I thought it would so I'm going to try another another color here let's see Let's, let's see. Oh, maybe candied apple might look. Oops, I just dropped some glitter. Candied apple. We could try that and see how that turns out. It's kind of a, a light color. I kind of like this flying by the seat of my pants. Ooh, the candied apple's really pretty. So let's try that. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna oh oh my goodness. I almost forgot to go over it with the white with the white. That wasn't too smart die. The white just allows the, the color to show through. This is another Altenu embossing folder, and this one is Sunshine Blossoms. Now, see, I did get a bit of the The white pigment ink there and I'll show you it does not oh it did a little bit but not fantastically okay let's go with the candied red here and see what we can do oh very nice oh that's really nice 
Oh, they do. Their 3D embossing folders are amazing. Look at that. Did you ladies know that you can use a stencil for embossing? I'm going to show you that technique. It doesn't come out, obviously, as 3D as this, but you can um, use that. I learned that from Gina K this week. I've been on YouTube. I never would have thought of using an embossing fold or a, a stencil. Ooh, that candy apple red is really nice. That would look so nice on poinsettias at Christmas time. Carol Lout knows how much I love poinsettias. Don't you, Carol, after having to make how many of them did I make that year? Oh, my goodness. Probably 400 of them. Oh, yes, I do love them. Would be a shame if my uh, poinsettia collection disappeared. Okay, look at that. That looks so nice. I love it. I think I left a petal here. And you can go up. Oh, look at that. Even darker if you want. I like it a bit darker in here so you can actually see the color a bit more. Uh, that's why my end is coming off. Okay, we could just use, we'll just use the brush. Oh my gosh, a thousand. Oh, that works as well, your little brushes here. There, look at that red. I love it. I'm not going to find the lid. You know, you ladies, this, this area is nice and clean. And if you looked at the other side of my table, it would be, oh my God. Okay, I'm going to try and use the Wild Wilderness. I think I have it right beside me here. Oh, no, I don't. It's over here. Rustic Wilderness, sorry. For the leaves. I'm going to use this brush. Okay. darker in here. And look at that. Now I just want to see if I can erase in here. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I will be making cards with all these to uh, give to Carol for the store. Yeah, I really like that one. So now I'm going to show you how to use a stencil with um, to make an embossing folder. So I'm just going to grab any stencil that I have. Uh, let's see here. I don't want a big one. Um, I want to use a stencil that Carol does have, or at least I'm hoping she has. 
Okay, let's try this background one. Okay, what you're gonna need is your stencil and this rubber mat from Cuddlebug. Well, from Cricut, Cuddlebug, whatever rubber mat that you have. This is the one that I have. Okay, and I'm gonna use my piece of cardstock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it with a little squirt of paper. Now when you do this, when you layer it, uh, I believe, I have to think about this again. You layer it up like so, like so, and this goes underneath this. So you'll have your plate on top and your plate on the bottom, but make sure your stencil is on top of your paper. Okay. So now I'm going to try this again and see if I did it right. Let's keep our fingers crossed, ladies. That I have. I'm going to put that in like so. So, I'm going to show you how I had sandwiched it. Let's hope it's right. Plate on top. Plate or rubber mat. No, that was not the right way. See? I believe it goes this way. Bottom mat. Stencil. Your paper. Your rubber mat. And your other mat on top. Now let's hope, ladies, this works. I'm just trying to go from memory. Okay, please, 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 I hope this works. Yes, you're right. I'm showing you what not to do. <gasps> Look at, ladies, it worked. Now, it's not a high um, emboss, but it did work. Look at that. Can everyone see that? I hope I can. everyone can see it. Yep. So, it goes this way, this way, this way with your mat on the bottom and your mat on the top. Isn't that a really neat idea? I thought so, too. I really like that idea. So that's all I have to show you tonight, ladies. Um, I did try one thing I wanted to show you. I thought I could use these, these, um, the color sparks. So I got inventful and attempted to make it. So what I did was I put it on here, just a couple of drops, and wet it, or spritzed it, and then I used my water... Uh, color paper and this is what I got to me it's a blob I don't like it yeah exactly stretching our supplies to give us more uh, bang for our buck so that didn't turn out the way I had wanted it to with the sparks because it didn't go in the crevice so that I'm still going to have to, uh, oh, excuse me, play with and see what uh, else that I can do with it. So just to give you a, a run over of what I've done, I've done this with the stencil. Okay, like so. So sometimes you can't find that embossing fold you want and you have a stencil. Wouldn't that be nice instead of the embossing fold? But it is very faint. Okay, and then we have our wood pieces that look like wood. Okay, and then we have, the, oh, this is the one that I finished with the glitter. Oops, and these are the ones that we have done. Now, I haven't glittered these up yet, and they will be glittered once I... I'll, uh, what I'll do is actually I'll show you what I'll do with the glitter for this one. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glitter and I'm going to just go in these lines here. Okay. And these are already on the embossing folder. You don't even have to make them. So I'll just get this. Uh, I'll get the red off of that. Glitter. Oh, doesn't it? It certainly does. Let's see. You know, ladies know what I forgot to use on this, don't you? My, I call it a pillow. Let's see if it'll work on the rest of it. And the ink didn't come off on it, which is good. I always go in in sections because then you know exactly what you've done. Look at that. What a difference in that card. I do love my glitter. It's one of my staples that I do bring with me when I go cropping or just go to Carol's house, even though I know she's probably got 10 million bottles of it, like she does inks. And I know she's probably sitting there laughing at me now. Now look at that. What a difference, eh? Oh, I think that makes the card stand out that much more. So I'm definitely going to have to... Yes. Prismatic. I love it. I love my prismatic glitter. Unless I've dropped the container over and then I don't like it. And then I... few choice words. So that's another effect that you can... Oh, I love it. Now I just have to find the... You could do black on black. Wouldn't that be pretty? Black on the green. Love it. Well, ladies, I want to thank you. I know it was short and sweet. I haven't been out to the store to to uh, get anything new. But I promise you, for the next one, which would be the second Thursday, as I'm busy the first Thursday of March, I promise I will get to the store for something new. And we can uh, try something different. Have a great rest of your evening and a great rest of your week. You guys are very, very welcome. And hope to chat soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.